Hello, I'm Chris Downer from Tackle It, and today we're looking at acceleration. It's crucial to be able to accelerate quickly when you're playing all forms of rugby. However, is it about being quick over 30 or 40 metres, or 5 or 10 metres? I would argue it's 5 or 10, because not all of us make that many breaks in a game, especially myself. But how do you learn to accelerate in small spaces? We're going to show you. Stay tuned. So there's lots of evidence that shows that sleds are really good for helping you improve your acceleration. But we don't all have a sled, and actually we're only going to work on the 5-10 metre period. And that's all about maximal strength and being as powerful as possible to overcome the inertia of going from a standing start. We also don't often have a clean running track in front of us when we're playing rugby. We've got to be able to move bodies and move people out of the way and still be fast and powerful. Therefore it's different to your normal sprint mechanics. So, if you don't have a sled, like we all don't, how can you do it with minimal gear? Well, all you need is one of these, a band and a budding volunteer. Okay, so, Amy's going to put it around the waist here, and we're just going to start with some easy progressions. She's just going to start nice and slow, she's going to go for about five metres as fast as she can. Three, two, one, go. And Amy works really hard over that five metre period with me trying to pull her back, okay? It's about maximal strength overcoming that initial inertia. So the second progression we're going to look at is, like I said before, we don't always have a clear running track to practice your sprinting when you're playing the game. You usually have some defenders in front of you like this, don't we? Okay, and actually, how do we move those people, still being powerful and trying to work on our acceleration as well? So we're trying to make it game specific. So this time, you've got G's going to hold Amy back with a band, exactly like we did in the first drill. Amy's going to come in nice contact, and Tamar's going to put some pressure on her shoulder, as if she's going to drive somebody out of the way. It's just a different stimulus to try and slow Amy down and make her work really hard to get that maximal strength to overcome that inertia to start running. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Good, 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 good. Well done. Okay. Again, it's all about maximal strength, going from a standing start to then trying to move through it. And that's why having those two different stimulus is a great way to work in your acceleration in a short space. So the final progression we've got today is similar to the second one. However, instead of Amy starting in contact with the bag, she's going to overcome that static position by using that maximal strength to get off the line with Georgia holding her back. And then as soon as she's got some momentum, we're going to knock it right back out of her and Tamar's going to give her a damn good whack with the bag. Okay, so she's going to try and hold the bag then and take it out of the way. So it's working harder to overcome that inertia, again working at maximal strength. Three, two, one, go. Good, and we take the momentum away, she's going to work really, really hard. These are maximal efforts. And there are three progressions, so you can work on your acceleration in small spaces. If you like our content, please don't forget to follow our channel, subscribe, and also have a look at our Instagram page. Three, two, one.